Hello and welcome back to the Tuesday Night Fiction Podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Austin, and tonight we're going to recap Chapter 2 of Book 2, Crystal Eyes. Released last week, that chapter was entitled Canvas. Tonight we're going to get pretty deep again like last week. Um, when we re- when we recap Chapter 1, um, it was lighthearted but also very serious. And before we get into Chapter 2 tonight... I just want to reflect on that a little bit. I don't like to say I told you so, but if you saw my, I don't know if you saw my Instagram, but clearly I told you so. So Mark Hamill, um, for those who haven't seen it, Mark Hamill decided to retweet a tweet by Ivanka Trump where she and her family are standing in a living room, all smiling, as families do, and her son is dressed up as a stormtrooper. Um, I she I believe she wrote something along the lines of "The Force is strong with my family." Well, Mark Hamill decided to retweet a picture of a nice-looking family and say that I believe you meant the word fraud. Um, I don't know how much more right I could have been. Mark Hamill is a demon, and no matter what you think about any any political family, this man is clearly not having a good time at all. And who doesn't have good times? The Sith doesn't have good times. Mark Hamill has proven time and time again that he is not the innocent farm boy that he tries to portray himself as that George Lucas put on film. Maybe he was in the past. Who knows? Maybe Mark Hamill really did go through a uh, a journey to the light side like Luke Skywalker did when he was younger. But as I said last week, it has become perfectly clear that his trajectory, this man who so who so links himself to the character Luke Skywalker, his trajectory has gone exactly as visionary Ryan Johnson portrayed it in the films, uh, that he, or in the film that he released, which was The Last Jedi. Luke Sc- uh, Mark Hamill has gone to the dark side full on and become Darth Hamill. And, I mean, I don't know how much more evidence I could present. Um, the man clearly can't help himself but to continue uh, revealing revealing this truth. Um, so just if you'd like to, to see more, just follow it, follow him on Twitter. Um, I don't use Twitter because it's cancer and I don't I, I mean I'm not a big fan. So um, I'm not gonna keep a lookout. I'm not gonna keep my eye on on the nonsense this ghoul spews on a daily basis. But suffice it to say that between his tirades at, at innocent children just having a good time playing dress up and but for, from between that and Disney's just descent, I mean, beyond what we talked about last week, I didn't go too much into the Disney side of it. Um, I think that in the original Star Wars movies, Darth Vader was like the pre- the main villain, right? And then you had Emperor Palpatine who kind of was the guy swinging him or 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 pushing him to to pushing his buttons to keep going further and further. Um Disney is obviously the emperor in this case. And what I didn't mention a lot of last week that I'll go into is one Disney creates nothing. They create nothing new. They regurgitate show movie after movie after movie they they don't have any new concepts at all um even the the new movies that they come out with are are just basically remakes of of old concepts um the plot lines are always the, the exact same and but even even beyond those i mean that's a fraction of what they come out with they don't they don't create anything they just regurgitate and only that is only the path of a, of a demonic organization. Uh, Disney is awful. And it's, it's not just showing 
um, through their movies. It's showing through their bottom line and their accounting. So, I mean, they're being investigated currently for like eight, 20 years of fraud or something along those lines. Again, I don't have the whole story, um, but it's pretty obvious that uh, Ryan Johnson was just trying to expose these people. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stay on this topic too much. All I'm trying to say is listen back uh, to the last two episodes um, and just understand that when you live with the truth, you find these things. Um, and even if it's satire, it's really not. Uh, it's. I mean, it's. It's really. It doesn't make it any less true. Okay. So, like I said, even if I say like Ryan Johnson is the hero, which he, obvi- I mean, he obviously isn't doing this stuff on purpose, um, if I'm being for real, but in a way he is a hero in the eyes of someone who's, who is being true because he's destroying that which is nonsense. Anyway, let's move on. Today I want to talk um, a little bit more about the chapters we've actually gone through. Um, because today we're two chapters in, so I can go a little bit more in depth than last week. Last week was chapter one of book two, so it was a little bit difficult to talk about the events that take place without saying any spoilers or anything. Um, but I will go into some of that today. I will talk a little bit more about chapter one as well. So with the concept, um, that I want to talk about today... Um, I've been violently ill for the past two days and, uh, I was, so that's why I'm a day late here, but I was taken care of by a marvelous woman. And when I say woman, I mean woman. And I would like to talk today about men and women and violence. And it's going to be heavy. Um, but also be entertaining, hopefully, and it will relate to the chapters that I just finished reading in the audiobook format, because this is an audiobook podcast, so as much as the, these recap episodes are fun, um, they reflect directly the chapters that I'm going through in the audiobook, um, so follow along with those and be part of the story. Anyway, in chapter one... And again, I'll get back to the to the illness thing in a little bit. But in chapter one, we saw Latera being cornered. Um, she's now stuck at the hold. She's dealing with several of her companions um, being attacked, and the women in particular being attacked by both the Keegans and Tokalis alike. They're being mistreated, and I, I mean, there's not too much detail in this book about like the nature but uh, Latera gets cornered in an alley and men try to force herself upon her now I want to talk about this in the context of something that I was exp- actually exploring um, when trying to find people to review my books so I looked up on Google one day the top uh, well not Google because I don't use Google but I, I looked up the top the top fantasy reviewers. And one of the pages I came to um, was a female reviewer who had a whole section on her website for the concept of violence being glorified in books and how she resents it. So I explored... um, I explored her page to see what she meant by that. And what it took me to um, was basically a list that she had up of books that she claimed glorified violence against women. And two, I, I don't remember the full list, but two of them for context were, one of them was Fifty Shades of Grey and another was uh, Twilight. And I don't really know a lot about Twilight. I can't really speak to Twilight, but with Fifty Shades of Grey, it's a little more on the nose that uh, it's glorifying a a very abusive relationship um, and the sexuality of that abusive relationship. Now, when I first 
uh, read what what this reviewer was saying about that concept. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was initially like eye rolling, you know. One, um, and I don't get me wrong, I was wrong to do that, and I'll I'll tell you why. But I was initially eye rolling because one, these are two series that are mostly read by women, right? So I was um, thinking that, thinking that it's a little bit weird for someone to say that that women are wrong in what they're reading if that's what they want to read, if that's what they're into. Um, I was incredibly wrong. The more I thought about it, the more wrong that I was. And I'd like to explain why in the context of masculinity versus femininity. So I will say that if the if this reviewer's message was to like ban these books, then I wholeheartedly don't agree with that. I don't agree anything should be banned. I think the things that are bad should be on full display just as much as anything else so we can root out the bad. However, I will say that I agree with her that they should be rejected. And here's why. Because in chapter one in chapter one of the of my book, again, I go into an example of violence against women. Um, where Lotera is attacked in an alley by a group of nasty men. Those men, however, are not masculine. I repeat, those men are not portraying masculinity as at least I choose to define it. Those men are displaying a lack of masculinity, as are the men in the Twilight series and in Fifty Shades of Grey. It is not masculinity to attack women. It is not masculinity masculinity to even hurt women in a sexual way. It is disgusting and it is an act of a sniveling rat to harm women. That is not what a man does. And as such, it is also not healthy to find pleasure in it. Even if you do, it isn't healthy to do. Um, the same way, and again, so going back to the fact that my initial thought of all these women are into these series, that doesn't make it good. The same way that I've talked before about how a lot of men watch porn, it it doesn't make it good. And a lot of the times, I know Fifty Shades of Grey is like considered the like female version of porn. It Those things are both incredibly toxic and awful. Like, on, on both sides. So no matter how many people get into it, it ruins the masculinity in men and ruins the... Fe and just the way that Fifty Shades of Grey ruins the femininity in men. And I was wrong, absolutely, to, to second-guess the intent of a woman who was trying to say that that should not be glorified. And she's right. And I, and I again, I, I wasn't second-guessing it because, because she was saying that. I was assuming she was trying to say something different. Um, probably more along the lines of, like, like I said, it being banned or something. I'm used to these bad arguments. And I'll give you an example of, of a bad argument um, that, that tries to be explained. Toxic masculinity. Um, nothing makes me more sick than when people refer to toxic masculinity. If you want to find good men in the world, you can't go around telling men that the idea of masculinity is toxic. That is absurd. That would be the same as saying that women who read Fifty Shades of Grey and enjoy it are showing toxic femininity. That's crazy, okay? They're not showing femininity at all. The same way men who portray, who are violent to women, who aren't protective of women and their fam and family, 
the men, the men who aren't there and, and don't fight for the truth and only tell the truth, the men who lie, those men are not masculine. So to say that they're being toxically masculine is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. The way that you find, the way, what, the day that you become a man, which I didn't until I was 25, legitimately, which is why I've said in the past, I don't think anyone should vote until they're 25. That's not me being exaggerating. I'm being 100% honest. I don't think I should have been allowed to vote until I was 25 because up until that point, I wasn't a man. And the reason why is because up until that point, I justified lying to myself and sometimes to other people. And it is not, that is not masculine. That is not what a man does. And until you find the truth, or at least the truth to your greatest understanding of what the truth is, and until you live by it every day, and you don't come up with excuses why you should do this or why you should do that, there is definitely a time in, in a person's life where they can get to that point. And until you get to that point, you haven't reached a state of masculinity, at least Again, for a man, I can't, honestly, I'm not going to try to define what the same thing is for a woman because I don't know. I'm not on that path exactly, but I can tell you what the good women I've seen do and try to, and try to approximate it. And one of those things is what I saw on that reviewer's page again, which is boxing out the idea that violence towards women should be glorified, whether it be written by a man or a woman. Again, because those books, I'm assuming, were written by a woman. I don't know. But I, I, or I think I know Fifty Shades of Grey definitely was. But all I know is, is that she was right. And she is demonstrating feminine, the feminine trait. And she's sticking up for women and being... And showing empathy. So, so again, when it comes to the concept of toxic masculinity, though, and, I, and I've seen this in multiple places. Um, one, a, a brand that I'll never buy again, Gillette, with their stupid-ass commercial that makes no sense at all. Gillette tried, which is, I mean, it's just mind-boggling that of all companies to do this, it's Gillette. And I know that they're suffering now because of it, which is just fantastic because I... Like I said, I will never buy another product by them just by nature of them trying to do this kind of thing because it's wrong. Gillette coming out with a commercial that says young boys shouldn't be wrestling and if you say boys will be boys, that's not good. Let's go into that example. So young boys wrestling. How do you know as a, as a, as a boy, as a, as a human man, what someone's pain threshold is Without those experiences, I had those experiences. Me and my friends, even in high school, had like fight times where we would like not fight like abusively, but like where, where you'd have to like have physical conflict to the point where you figure out what someone's pain threshold is. And a lot of times as a man, you become closer with those people because of it, because it teaches you what what the what the lengths of your inner rage are because it exists you can't deny that it exists so you have to come to grips with it and learn what the threshold is of how much you can exert and that's those and that's what those experiences are for young boys and they go and do that and so that somehow tries to tries to vilify Something that all boys have done since the beginning of time because it's a natural instinct. And it's just wrong. And am I saying you should, am I saying you should purposefully like attack people or something or like, like try to damage someone? Obviously not, but you can't know what that is until you experience that and get socialized into it. And then again, more examples where they say you can't, as a man, can't walk up to a girl and say hi on the street. It's just like, 
What? How do you communicate with women if not somewhat spontaneously? Is the guy that's going up and talking to her like wronging her immediately just by doing it? It's just, it's absurd. And I mean, everyone knows it's absurd. I'm not saying anything like new here. All I'm saying is, is that the concept of masculinity and saying the co and saying the phrase toxic masculinity is it's it doesn't make any sense at all. It's like an oxymoron or whatever. It doesn't. There's nothing toxic about actual masculinity. There's just a lack of masculinity in the cases of I'm not gonna lie, a lot of men. And there's also the same with women. The same percentage of women have a lack of femininity. And I'll go into that in a second. But again, just on one more example, I see, I, I saw another, I think uh, it was like Owen Benjamin posted something about some woman who wrote, I don't know, just some crazy nonsense about abortion. So I went and explored her page and she has a book out about, I guess, toxic masculinity or something along those lines where she says she has conversations with men who reflect on their toxic masculinity. And I don't know what's in the pages of those book, of that book. I could tell you that none of those men are masculine and then none of them know what masculinity is. And all of them are lying to her. Every single one. They're lying to her because they want something from her or they think that telling her, telling her this or that will get, the, will gain them favor. Men don't do that. Men don't lie or say things that aren't true to gain favor with women. That is what a rat does. That is what a snake does. Any demonic animal that you could think of. I mean, men who do that are the sneakiest, least trustworthy, most disgusting men that exist. That they only say what women want them to say so that they can... Literally, so that they can get in their pants. That's it. Those men are the ones who do sexual assault to women because they don't get what they want. And they are horrible. They are the snakes of the world. They are the ones who went after Latera in chapter one. And you better believe that, especially if you're a woman. Otherwise, and women do. Women know this. Instinctively, they know it. Because when they deal with these kind of people, they're repulsed by them. That woman who wrote that book and got these men to say whatever they said doesn't respect a single one of them. She's getting a bunch of weak, pathetic people to say anything she wants so that she can get what she wants out of her book. It's nonsense. It's complete and utter nonsense. If you are a man, you have responses... If you are a masculine man there are certain things that you do you tell the truth first and foremost I mean like that is pretty much the thing that gets you to transition into being a man now are there a lot of adults adult men who who don't tell the truth yes are they men? Sure. Are they masculine? No. And that's the turning point, is telling the truth or not. Now, it's more than that, obviously. Um, again, like I said a little bit earlier, real men, masculine men, protect the people they love, their family. They protect their family above all else all else if someone tries to if someone tries to wrong their family a man can become violent and he would be justified in being violent in self defense of especially of his family that is what a man does a man does a man protects so when it comes to the people who say things like, for example, like I mentioned with the reviewer, 
the men in the in these books who hurt women should not be celebrated. Absolutely. They should be villains. And that's the problem with Fifty Shades of Grey. Is Fifty Shades of Grey presents this fake world where you have a man who gets off on abusing a woman and then they get married. And I don't even know how it ends. I, I think that someone told me that's how it ends. If that is, again, it's horrible. And that guy is is glorified in that book. I don't know all the details of the of the story, but glorification of that is wrong. Um, protection at all costs is what makes a man a man. Now, when I'm talking about masculine versus feminine, some people are more masculine, some people are less masculine. Some people are more feminine. Some people are less feminine. Am I saying that a man can't have empathy? Am I saying that in some form? Am I saying that a man, uh, a woman can't be protective? No, obviously not. And if you're going to be the type of person who says, well, well not everybody's like that. Get the fuck out of here. Honestly, I, I need to, I feel like I need to do one of these speeches every day. In every podcast I do where I say, where I, I call out these types of people who need to question je- the averages, right? I'm talking in averages, okay? Most men behave a certain way. Most women behave a certain way. There are going to be examples of more or less than that. There's going to be examples where people don't behave this way and are still decent people. I don't care, okay? What I'm saying is, is that on average, these are the traits that real masculine men, good men, exhibit. And to call, to, and, and to even for a second, to conflate that with the deeds of sinister snakes is wrong beyond belief. And women, if you want to find a good man, don't do that, okay? That woman who wrote that book on toxic masculinity will not find a good man under any circumstances unless one comes to her and says, your book is nonsense. Fact. Because it is. No man, no man, believes otherwise honestly none because it's it's bullshit okay it is complete and utter bullshit to call masculinity real masculinity toxic and she doesn't even believe it that's the thing she doesn't even believe it so moving on to again some of the why i was saying earlier that there are as many non-feminine women as non-masculine men because you get the same argument on both sides for why people can't find the goodness the good the, the masculine man the feminine woman um i know from experience that there are plenty of men out there whether it's the incel community or even not even the incel i mean that's like a nonsense word i don't even think that that those people, if people really consider themselves an incel, then I mean, they're done. They, they don't have any hope. But for the, I even have friends, and I know a lot of people who say, well, the, the traditional, the traditional man woman bond just doesn't exist anymore. People just don't want that anymore. People don't pursue that anymore. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. Okay. If a man thinks that, then he's just as bad as the women he says don't want it and who just go around wanting sex and wanting career and wanting this and wanting that. It, it's not true. The problem is that you aren't being straight up and honest with the women you meet. And I know because until I was, I didn't meet 
the person who just took care of me for two nights and who said when I was violently ill that the only thing that she cares about is that I feel better. That is femininity. That is, is caring. That is empathy. That is what a woman, a good woman does. And it exists in every woman. It exists somewhere. Just the way masculinity exists and can be found within any man. The problem is, and I know that for me, for what I've realized for, for men, the answer is accepting the truth. The answer is to stop lying to yourself and to other people. That is how you get everything else on the same page. When I, when I stopped lying to myself, when I made a concerted effort to tell the truth all the time, the truth as I know it all the time, within months I met a real woman. And you know what the difference was? It wasn't fate that that happened. It wasn't chance that that happened. The reason why that happened is because my eyes were open. For the first time, my eyes were open so that when I walked into the dog park and when I met this girl, I could actually see that, sh that the goodness existed there. I could actually see that this is a woman who was in touch with her femininity. That if I didn't pursue this, it would be one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And so I did because my eyes were open because I could see. So what I will say is that I know that that is the way for men. I know that telling the truth is the quickest way of restoring masculinity or, or maybe attaining it for the first time. Because if you attain it, it, I would imagine it's harder to lose. If you, if you tell the truth and you don't stop telling the truth, there's no, there's no way to lose it from there. Um, but at the same time, I don't know what the answer is for women. I can't tell you what the answer is for women. I can't tell you the thing you should focus on other than saying to embrace it, to know what the things are. May, again, maybe it's maybe there's an element of truth to it also. Maybe it's an element of accepting nature. You know, I hear a lot of the argument of, of the thing now about, about people like not wanting children. And it's always, well, everyone I know that has kids is miserable. I mean, which isn't even true at all, but there's this fear of family. There's this fear of pretty much everything that I grew up knowing was good in the world. And maybe the answer is to just stop rejecting that, to stop being afraid of it. And I don't know, again, I'm not going to pretend like I can help get a, get someone there who isn't on the same path as me, which is most women. However, I will say, find examples, find positive examples. Find the people, the women who do the right things, who, who stand up against this bullshit of of free sex and sexual revolution. It's nonsense. It's just fucking nonsense. The sexual revolution failed miserably. Fifty Shades of Grey is disgusting. It's a terrible book. And it, again, this isn't even coming from like a chastity person. I'm not, I'm not trying to shut you down or anything. I'm just saying that your life is going to suck and it's going to make sense why it sucks. And you're going to resent people if you follow these paths. It's just obvious. It's like, so, and 
at the same time, vilifying the people who don't with the word toxic is just, it's pathetic, honestly. But again, and in chapter two, we see examples also of positive masculinity. So, or sheesh, you got me, you got me speaking in your fucking languages, you social justice shitheads. Not positive masculinity. Masculinity. Chieftain Orin, who we meet for the first time, is one of my favorite characters, who is a bubbly guy. You know, he's not your, your rough and tumble man. That's not what masculinity is, being rough and tumble. Again, you don't have to be like... And, and again, it doesn't mean either not, not being in touch with your emotions. A man is completely in touch with his emotions. A masculine man is completely aware of his emotions. However, when his family is going through a hard time, Hansa, in, cha in chapter 2, it has been reconnected with his uncle for months. He just lost his father, right? Or he lost his father in book 1, as we know. How? What would be the benefit to Hansa of Oren crying with him just for hours on end about his father's loss. There would be none. A man is aware of his emotions. Chieftain Oren certainly feels immense pain at the loss of his brother. But in the face of those you love, in the face of those you care about, you must be in control. A masculine man is in control of his emotions. Again, it doesn't mean that you can't you you can't feel. It doesn't even mean that you can't cry. But but it's the lashing out. It's the losing of your of your humanity and your personality and and the goodness that you can't that a man doesn't allow to happen. And in this case, we see Orin who is a silly person, but a strong person. He knows how to keep things lighthearted, but at the same time, he can turn around and have a conversation with Hansa about the nature of men. And though he doesn't use the word mascul emasculine when he describes the people who have wronged him, the essence of what he's saying is essentially that. That that's what they are. Because it is. The men who would attack women, who would even hurt women for pleasure, even if the woman is enjoying it. The men who would... who would put their thirst for, before and their, and their lust for power, who would put those things before their family, the ones who they are meant to protect are not masculine, they shouldn't be celebrated, and and that's it. That's really it. Um, when it comes to some of these messages, so again, these are recaps of the chapters that we're going through. And one topic I want to talk about a little bit aside from um, the concept of masculine men versus women and versus feminine women and violence is the writing journey that I've had through these books. So with book two, these messages that I've been talking about in these recap episodes, we can see they're starting to become a little bit more on the nose, but they're, they're still not there, right? They aren't perfectly clear. And the reason why, besides... Again, my writing skill, which this is the second book I've written, it, it kind of improve. It absolutely improves over the course of the four books that I've written so far, and I can see again that it is through into the fifth book. Um, so that's one reason, right? When you're when you're still honing your ability to tell a story, it I found that at that time it was still it was hard to also send a message. Um, I mean, not send a message because I think a message is definitely sent, but 
to be a little more clear about the message, right? Without having to read between the lines too much, right? So being a little, a little bit more literal at times. Um, but what I found, and again, because I said, uh, I didn't really feel like I became a man until I was 25. I only became 25. I only turned 25 last year. So I was still in the process of writing the fourth book. I, I didn't, I don't feel to date that I had reached that point during books one to three. I was trying to get there. Subconsciously or consciously, I was trying to get there and I was figuring those things out. And that's why I feel like when I recap these chapters now, I can see, I can see that fight on the pages. I can see that fight to where I knew, because I feel like I always kind of known. But again, the lies that you tell yourself prevent you from living it. They prevent you from putting it into action. They prevent you from accepting the truth. And whether that have been the truth about day-to-day -day things or bigger things, I couldn't have gotten there without this these steps in the journey. And that's what chapters one and two are. And that's what the Terra's, the Terra's battle in the hold to start the book. Um, and also Hans, Hans's interaction with Orin. That's what those things helped bring out. Um, I was, I think in a way, representing my own struggles through those characters and it's helped immensely. I mean, like this, this series has literally helped me figure out, <coughs> excuse me, sheesh, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. That was a, that was a choke. I might be crying a little bit. Um, th this series helped me figure out who I am and why I'm here. I mean, as plainly as can possibly be stated, it literally helped me discover like the purpose. It helped me discover my purpose in the world. And this Ill it's catching up to me. Being sick is catching up to me. I need a drink. <sighs> Wednesday night fiction. I had to get this out at least by today, so I, I'm going to wrap up here because I clearly am, am losing my ability to speak. However, I will say that, again, I'm a math guy. I speak in averages. Everybody's different. However, if I was to give advice to any young man at all, it would be to tell the truth. And it's not corny. It's not, it can't be overstated. It literally can't. Every day, to yourself and to others, tell yourself the truth and speak it out loud, okay? When, when a person does something wrong, acknowledge that it's wrong. Don't say that everyone does something wrong. Obviously, everyone does wrong things there's no need to say that but what you're doing when you say that instead of saying what they did is wrong what you're doing is you're justifying the next wrong thing that you're going to do so you have to tell the truth you have to tell the truth as we saw with with Castor who ends up killing himself in book one. You have to tell the truth. The thing that he did that was wrong was killing himself. It doesn't make it okay. He could have gone and done the right thing. He could have made his wrongs right, but he didn't. And the answer is to just not lie. So that's how you end up Forming these addicting habits. You end up drinking. You end up doing drugs. You end up getting addicted to different things because you just tell yourself, so does everyone. Everyone's got their vices. 
And obviously they do. But you don't have to. You don't have to. Everyone does. Nobody has to. And I won't. I won't. Anymore, if I know something is destructive, if I know it's wrong, I won't do it. You want to know why? Especially now. Because I found an amazing woman. Amazing. I would protect her. I would tell her the truth. I would do just about anything. To make her know she's loved. To make her know that there will be no pain. To make her know the truth. Because that's my role. That is my role. And she fulfills her role every day. And a woman out there will do the same for you if you just do the same for them. Thank you. This has been Tuesday Night Fiction. We'll be back next week with Chapter 3 of Book 2, Crystallize. Thanks for listening. If you're interested, if you'd like to support this podcast, I'll just tell you really quick, the series is available on Amazon. Even if you just like listening, I know the podcast is free, but if you just like listening in, the book's... Uh, buying the books helps support a ton. They're very pretty looking. The covers are very pretty looking. So even if you just want to have them up on your shelf, they make a great addition to any book collection. However, reading them is cool too. So if you prefer reading over listening and you just like listening to the recap episodes, there will be much more to come in the recap episodes, much more Easter eggs, um, fun facts, things that inspired certain things. Um, and hopefully just... Nuggets that will help you get through the day. And especially if you're a man, will help you shift, sift through the storm of nonsense that comes daily about how the things that make you good are actually the things that make you bad. Know the truth. Be there for people. The people that you love. Put no one before them. And have a good night. And I'll talk to you next week.